I took my grandkids yesterday to Luray and we had such a good time. The whole time I'm, I remembering the time when I took my little girls, my little girls. All right, good morning, Antioch family. How's everybody doing this morning? It is so good to see you. We are so glad that you have joined us. Uh, thank you so much for coming and thank you for tuning in online at our Facebook page. We're honored. To host you. Who's happy to be in the Lord's house this morning? Amen. We live in a free country. We can freely worship this morning without fear. Hallelujah. If you are here for the first time, we want to thank you for coming. We have a little card in the seat pocket in front of you. You just fill that out. Tell us you were here. Drop it off in the offering basket that goes around. And then we have a gift for you back at the blue tables where you came in. Nursery and toddler church down this hallway. Kids Alive is happening in the chapel. If you have children, they would love that. Have so much fun. Take them over there. Just remember to pick them up before you leave. Amen. We have got so much to tell you about happening here at Antioch. But before we do anything else, I just feel led by the Lord to just have a moment of prayer for what's happening in the world. I want to pray for the Ukraine. I want to pray for what's happening in Europe. Would you just for a moment just get on your feet and join me in a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, we just pray in the name of Jesus right now for the country of Ukraine. We pray, O oh Lord, uh, we pray against the evil that is assailing them and attacking them. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would raise up a standard. We pray your protection. We pray that you would rally the world to go to their aid. Oh, we thank you, O oh God, that you have never lost a battle and you have never lost a war. So we pray in the name of Jesus that you would bring peace to this conflict, that you would use it to bring people closer to you. We pray that you will be their, the, the, the Ukraine's defender. You would be their defender. You would stand for them and fight for them, oh God. Stop this evil force in Jesus' name. We pray for the families, for the soldiers, for the women, the children, those running for their lives. We just pray, oh God, Lord, that you will bring beauty out of these ashes, that you will turn what the enemy is meant for evil, and that you will find a way to use it for good. We stand with them today. We plead the blood of Jesus over that nation and over their allies and over the surrounding territories. Foil the plans of the enemy. Lord, I pray you will stop the heart of Vladimir Putin. I pray you will stop that evil force. In Jesus' name, we plead with you, Lord. You are the Prince of Peace. So, Lord, we turn to you. We pray strength. We pray your angels would be surrounding them. Be with the churches and the believers, our brothers and sisters over there. Lord, be their protector. Be their shield. Be their fortress. Lord, we just pray for our entire world, our, our nation, all the nations. Lord, we pray that they would turn to you. We pray that you will send a revival to America. Send a revival to this world. We pray you will wake us up to the truth. We pray, oh God, that the name of Jesus would be heard all across the land. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen. And amen. You can have a seat just for a brief moment. Miss Gloria is going to come and she's going to tell us all about Hope for Appalachia. Give her a hand, will you? Give her Hey guys, it's once again, it's time for us to start collecting for Hope for Appalachia. For new folks that are here and you don't know what it is, we go into Bell County, Kentucky. It's one of the poorest counties in the United States. And we take these little hope boxes. The kids call them the Jesus boxes. We take these little Jesus boxes down to these kids, which consist of a toothbrush, toothpaste, two pair of socks, pencils. Can you imagine kids getting excited over a toothbrush that they have their very own toothbrush? We take these down there and we give it to the kids, but more important than that, we get to talk to them about the Lord. <clears throat> now, I don't know about y'all, because a lot of y'all are like young and I am, but I remember Smokey the Bear coming in my school and bringing me a ruler. There was, there was nothing better than that little wooden ruler, right? Well, we're taking Jesus in these boxes, guys. We're taking Jesus in these boxes. And when kid, if I can remember as old as I am, Smokey Bear bringing me the ruler, can you imagine them remembering Jesus? And so last year we took um, 232 boxes. This year we want to take 250 boxes. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> the deadline to have them back here is March 13th. I didn't give you all too much time because I know how you are. You're procrastinators because I am. <laughs> And I know we ask a lot of you here at Antioch, but you know what? Y'all got a lot to give, and I know you'll keep on giving it. If you just look at these demographics, you can see the need. I don't have to tell you about it. So I want to thank you in advance. I know we're going to meet our goal, and let's get those boxes in. If anybody wants to go, you still have a couple days you can apply to go. Nate's kid and I, and maybe Michelle Sorrells is going. I'm going to stand in the back of the church. If anybody has any questions they want to ask after worship service, I'll be glad to do the best I can to answer them. Thank you very much. Sundays at 5.30 p.m. for a women's Bible study, or Thursdays at 10 a.m. See you at Awana at 5.30 with a lots of joy in your hearts. Wednesday, March 9th, will be a called business meeting. If you want your voice heard, that's the time to show up. March 13th is the due date for all the items for Hope for Appalachia. Please see the table in the sanctuary for a list of items you can place in your box. Sunday, March 13th, during second service, will be deacon ordination. March 6th through the 13th, we'll be collecting for the Annie Armstrong Easter offering. Don't forget to be in prayer for the North American missions this week. Don't forget to check that bulletin for anything that we may have missed. There's lots of stuff coming up. Uh, if y'all want to hop up on your feet, get to worship in the Lord this morning. He deserves it today. Are you past the point of weary? Is your burden weighing heavy? Is it all too much to carry? Let me tell you about my Jesus. Do you feel that empty feeling? Cause shame's done all it's stealing. And you're desperate for some healing. Let me tell you about my Jesus. He makes a way when there ain't no way Rises up from an empty grave Ain't no sinner that he can't save Let me tell you about my Jesus His love is strong and his grace is free And the good news is I know that he can do for you what he's done for me Let me tell you 
so thankful to be here this morning, Lord, to be able to praise your name, Lord, freely like Dave was just praying about, Lord, we're so thankful for this blessing, Lord, this moment. We don't want to take it for granted, Lord, help us to stay in the moment, Lord. Help us to fix our eyes on you this morning, Lord. As we sing this next song, Lord, we're singing about how we're never alone, Lord. I just pray that you would just open up our eyes to what we're saying, Lord. We're saying that you are so good to us, that you never leave us that you go before us, Lord, that you are such a good father, Lord, to us, and we love you. And we just want to praise your name, Lord, this morning. We love you, Jesus. When I walk through deep waters, I know that you will be me. And when I'm standing in the fire, I will not be overcome. Through the valley of the shadow, I will not fear.
thankful you promised us that you would never leave us or forsake us thank you oh lord that you've hemmed us in you you're before us and behind us above us and beneath us there's nowhere we can go to escape from your presence if we go to the heights you're there if we go to the depths you're there lord i just pray oh god that there would be a, a, a move in our hearts and in our spirits that many here would come out of hiding, that they would open their hearts to you, that they would let you in, that they would surrender to you, that they would follow you, oh God, that they would let the, let you save them, oh Lord. We just ask that, that the Prince of Peace would come in a mighty way. Lord, in the midst of deep sorrow, in the darkest valley, oh God, you are there. You are with us. You will bring us through. Lord, if, if you brought us to it, God, I know you're going to bring us through it. Hallelujah. You will not abandon us. So, Lord, we stand here in the full assurance of our faith. And we rest. We rest. Our souls rest in you. Speak to us today. Challenge us today. Save us today. Sanctify us today. Fill us today. More of you and less of us. In Jesus' name, we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. You can be seated. Woo! I'm telling you. We are not alone. Amen. Thank you so much, worship team. I tell you, I love this worship team so much. They always bring us into the Lord's presence. Amen. The sound, the media, the ushers, everybody. And if, if we can find the Lord, put it on somebody's heart, can turn the lights on. We'd be really rocking. Hallelujah. Get them lights up. Somebody. Nobody's moving. All right. So maybe, maybe the Lord will light the place up on his own. We are talking in a series now, second part of our I Love My Church series. And I just want to let you know this morning, I love my church. I love this church. I love you. I love Antioch. I love what God's doing here. We're not the only church. We are surrounded by some other awesome churches in this area, and we bless them, and we pray for them and their leaders and their members. But I, for me, there's no other place I'd rather be, amen, than as a part of Antioch Baptist Church. Woo, good old-fashioned Southern Baptist Church. We are Antioch. Now, I want you to know exactly what kind of church you are worshiping in this morning. I want you to know our vision, I'll put it up on the screen for you, is to be 
the church. This is the vision of Antioch, to be the church. Amen. We're not just talking about coming to a building. We're talking about being a people. The church is an organism. It's not just an organization. Come on. It's not just a place. It's a people filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, walking in the grace of God, showing the world the love of Jesus. Amen. That is what we're about. And that is our vision. We have a 2020 vision for the future to expand and to build and to be a lighthouse for for this community, and we finally, we have got the, the first, uh, the final edition of those plans ready. We're going to be revealing them to you very soon. I'm so excited for what's going to happen in this field back here. Praise God. Our mission is to love, connect, go, and grow. That's how we accomplish the vision of being the church. Now, last week, we broke it down like a fraction, exactly how we roll here at Antioch, I'm going to put this sentence up on the screen for you so you can know. Antioch Baptist Church, we are an elder-led, congregationally governed, deacon-served, and volunteer-driven church. That's who we are. And I want to share with you this morning what our core values are here at Antioch. These core values, they're like the pistons in the engine of your vehicle. They're like the valves of your heart. These are our values. They're our core conviction. They're at the center of our vision and the mission of this church. I got five of them, two bonus points for you this morning just for showing up. Antioch Baptist Church is a Christ-centered, Bible-believing, come on somebody, Woo! prayer-powered, missions-minded, and family-focused church. That's who we are. Point number one, first and foremost, always, we're a Christ-centered church. We believe that Jesus Christ is the one and only way to heaven. We believe that Jesus is the eternal Son of God, that He is fully God and fully man, that He came born of a virgin, that He lived a perfect life, that He died the perfect death on the cross in your place and in my place to please the Father and to pay the price for our sins and that by the power of the Holy Spirit, He was raised up on the third day and He is right now seated on the throne at the right hand of power, right next to the Father, waiting to return and establish His rule and His reign on this earth and to judge the quick and the dead. And I'm here to tell you, I believe He's coming soon. Jesus Christ is the only hope for this lost and dying world. And everything that we do as a church revolves around Jesus and should reflect Jesus to the world. Jesus said he was the way, the truth, and the life, that no one could come to the Father except through him. Jesus is the gate. Jesus is the door. He is the good shepherd. He is the bread of life. He is the resurrection and the life. And everyone who believes on him will have their sins forgiven and will receive the gift of eternal life. Amen. We're a Christ-centered church. I'm going to put this scripture up. Colossians 3.17 says, And whatever you do, whether in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Everything that we do as a church, everything we say, we strive to do it in Christ and through Christ and for Christ. I don't know what problem you came in here with this morning, but here's what I know. Jesus Christ is the solution. I don't know what questions you have sitting on your mind or stirring in the depths of your heart, but this I know. Jesus Christ is the answer. I don't know what chains have you bound this morning, but Jesus Christ is the chain breaker. I don't know what has you depressed today, but I know this. Jesus Christ can give you joy, unspeakable and full of glory. I don't know what worries have you all anxious and stressed out, but I know that Jesus Christ can move any mountain that stands in your way. I don't know how many times you have prayed and prayed and prayed for that lost loved one or for that breakthrough or about this situation. But I know this, Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God and believe also in Him. He is the way. He is the answer. And every prayer you have prayed, Jesus has heard it, He has recorded it, and He has repeated it to God the Father. And I'm here to tell you, hold on to Jesus because the answer is on the way. Woo! Look at your neighbor and say, it's all about Jesus. Come on, somebody. Look up. Our answer is on the way. He is coming to soon. Turn to Jesus. He's the Alpha, the Omega, the first 
and the last. It's all about Jesus. Antioch Baptist Church is a Christ-centered church. Point number two, we are a Bible-believing church. I don't preach to you out of the Reader's Digest. I don't preach to you out of the New York Times. I don't even use it because I like my toilet paper on rolls. Come on, somebody. I'm preaching to you out of the living, breathing Word of God. This is what the Bible is. This is the only book that God ever wrote. It is our primary source for teaching and for living our lives in order with God's will. Jesus said this. He said, heaven and earth will pass away, but his word would never pass away. 2 Timothy 3.16, I want to put this scripture up. It says this, all scripture is inspired by God and is profitable for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting, and for training in all righteousness so that the people of God can be complete and equipped for every good work. And I don't think this book is inspired. I don't mean it's, that it's inspiring, although it is. When, I, when we say this book is inspired, it means it is God breathe that God moved on the minds and the hearts and used the personalities of the human author to give us the very words he wanted us to have. We believe that this is the authoritative, written, completed work of Almighty God. Amen. We're a Bible-believing church. I'm, I'm going to remind some of you this morning, I'm not interested with what's trending on Facebook. I'm interested with what's in this book. I could care less about what's happening on Instagram. I want to proclaim the truth from the great I am. Come on, somebody. And I could care less about your Snapchat. I'm here to preach the Savior's cross, that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he has spoken to us and revealed himself to us. And we have the very words of life. When we, when we open the Bible, when you read the Bible, you are reading a living, breathing book. And when you read the Bible, the Bible reads you. It searches the mind. It sorts out the intentions and the motivations of the heart. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. It divides the soul from the spirit. It is the full authoritative written word of God. I could care less about thinking outside the box, but I do want to try to live in between the pages. Come on, somebody. I think if we get back to the Bible, we will see God move. I'm here to tell you in this church, we don't argue with the Word. We don't apologize for this Word. If the Bible says it's wrong, guess what? It's wrong. Don't care how much you like it. Don't care how, how much it appeals to you. Don't care how much you'd love to just alter it or change it. If the Bible says it's wrong, it's wrong. And if the Bible says it's right, it's right. We believe this, that if God has said it, that settles. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 24 says, All flesh is like grass, and its glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers, and the flower falls, but the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word that was preached as the gospel to you. Antioch Baptist Church, we are a Bible-based and Bible-believing church church point number three we're a prayer powered church we want every activity every teaching every outreach every post every hope box to be smothered in prayer i want to remind us of what jesus said in the book of matthew chapter 21 and in verse 13 when he drove the money changers out of the temple and he said to them it is written my house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it into a den of thieves. We have to make sure that this house is a house of prayer. We cannot let this house just be a political stage or a social platform or a social club. This has to be a house of prayer. And if we aren't daily seeking his face in prayer, if we aren't walking in the power of prayer, and if we're not praying before and after everything we do, then we are missing the mark. We have to be a prayer-powered church. I love what Leonard Ravenhill said. He said, no person is greater than their prayer life. You know what I love about prayer? It's the highest calling of God. I love what Oswald Chambers said. He said this, prayer doesn't just prepare you for the greater works. Prayer is the greater work. Any saint 
regardless of age, regardless of biblical knowledge, regardless of physical ability, can enter into the ministry of prayer. You have a direct line to Almighty God. We have to be prayer powered. Leonard Ravenhill said this, the pastor who is not praying is playing. The people who are not praying are straying. We have many organizers, but we have few agonizers. We have many players and payers, but few prayers. Many singers, but few clingers. Lots of pastors, but few wrestlers. Many fears, but few tears. We got a lot of fashion, but we're low on passion. We have a lot of interferers, but not a lot of intercessors. We have many writers, but few fighters. And if we fail in prayer, we fail everywhere. I got to ask you that riveting question that the Holocaust survivor Corey Ten Boom asked in one of her sermons on prayer. Is prayer your steering wheel or is it your spare tire? Is it driving your life? Or the only time it makes an appearance is when you get broke down on the side of the road and you are in an emergency. You should definitely pray then, but I love what Billy Graham said. He said, pray always so that when the trial does come, you're in practice and you're ready for it. We have to be a house of prayer because prayer is what changes the hearts of people and prayer is what moves the heart of God. It's prayer. It's prayer. It has to be at the heart of everything we do because it's through prayer that we can touch and share the very heart of God. He has chosen to partner with us to share his vision and his will and his word and to communicate with you and with me. So there's the question, how's your prayer life? How's your prayer life? A lot of us, we spend a whole lot of time talking to everybody else and not enough time talking to God. You should talk to him first and you should talk to him last every day. Talk to God first and talk to him last and talk to him everywhere in between. And then see how your life shifts. See how your depression lifts. See how breakthrough comes. See how your heart gets softened. See how there is love and and peace and, and mercy where there wasn't before. That's what happens when we pray. One thing is guaranteed, people, if you do not pray, nothing will happen. We have to be a house of prayer because Antioch Baptist Church is a prayer powered Church, point number four, missions minded. Y'all can't believe we're moving this morning. Woo! We are compelled by the love of God to reach our world for Jesus Christ. We exist to go and to preach the gospel and to make disciples of all nations. We are determined to go across the street and around the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. This church will die if it slips into maintenance mode. We have got to stay in missions mode and we have to continue to spread the love of God to every person on the planet. Jesus told the disciples in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, he said, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of of the earth. You know what the disciples were wondering before Jesus said this? They wanted to know, Lord, when are you going to bring about the consolation of Israel? They wanted to know when was Jesus going to come and set up his rule and his reign and and reestablish that on the earth. This is what Jesus told them. Jesus said, you don't need to mind your manner. You don't need to waste any time worrying about that. That is up to God the Father and that is up to me. But you are going to receive power when the Holy Ghost comes on you. You know what happened to all those people after the Holy Ghost came on them? They weren't worried about any of those questions they had before. All they were worried about was going and preaching the gospel to Jerusalem, Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. I think that Acts 1-8 lays out the biblical pattern for missions for every church. This is our model. This is our model. First, number one, you got to get prayed up and you got to get powered up. He said, You will receive power. The Greek word is dunamis, it's dynamite. It is explosive. This is what God's going to put in you and bring on you explosive power to be His witnesses. The Greek word for witnesses is martos, it means martyr. It's where we get the word, it means faithful in life and faithful up to death. I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Come on, somebody. I don't just want to taste, I want the whole meal. 
I don't just want an appetizer. I want a full plate. I don't just want to get my feet wet. I want to be baptized in the Spirit. I don't just want a fleeting feeling. I want to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. Why? Not so I can show off some fancy gifts. We want to be full. Why? So that we can be poured out. Because unless we're full of the power of God, we don't have anything to give a lost and dying world. We've got to be prayer powered. We've got to be missions minded. We have to have the power of God. That's the first thing. The second thing, we reach our community. That's our Jerusalem. Our immediate community is our Jerusalem. Then we reach our state and our nation. That's our Judea and Samaria. And then we don't stop until every person on this planet has heard about Jesus Christ. It starts here, and it expands out, and it goes all around the world. It is not either or, it is both and, and we are called to labor in both. We talked about the second coming of Christ already. I think we have forgotten that there are still estimated 3 billion plus people that have never heard about the first coming of Jesus Christ. 17,000 known people groups. 7,000 of those people groups are completely unreached. have never heard about Jesus Christ. Guess what? It's your job and it's my job to reach them. That's why we partner with the North American Missions Board like we will in a few weeks. And that's why we partner with the International Missions Board and with GlobeLink and in India and in Africa and everywhere. Why? Because it's our job. Jesus said to go. It was not the great suggestion. It was the great commission. I love what Charles Spurgeon said. He said, every Christian is either a missionary or an imposter. Every Christian... You and me. Every Christian is either a missionary or an imposter. Where do you start? You start in your home. You continue as you go out the door to your workplace, to your school, to your social circle, to your influence. And then maybe, who knows, one day God may call you to go to to, to, to Appalachia. He may call you to Kentucky. He may call you to get on a plane and go halfway around the world. But the important thing is, is you start going and then let the Lord lead you. Nina Gunter said this, I got an amen from the back, hallelujah. I hear that baby saying, yes, Lord. Nina Gunter said this, I love this quote so much. She said, if you take missions out of the Bible, the only thing you have left is the front and the back cover. If you take missions out of the Bible, you don't have nothing left but the cover. Two-thirds of God's name is go. So we're called to be a missions-minded church starting in March I'm so excited about this every single month for the rest of this entire year we are reaching out in some way shape or form to our community our Jerusalem to our state and our in our nation to our Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the world we are going to feed in March guess what we're going to feed every single teacher in Fluvanna County we're going to feed everyone yeah clap and show up to help. Everybody clapping. Gloria, turn around, take a picture. Everybody clapping. We're going to need you to pull some pork. We're going to need you to bake some beans. We're going to need you to make some macaroni and cheese. We're going to need you to deliver that hot food to the school. we got four schools to go to. We're going to feed them all. You know why? We're going to tell them Jesus loves them. We appreciate you and the work that you've done. We support you, and we're praying for you. Amen. Woo, yeah. We're going to support and pray for North American missionaries partnering with the North American Missions Board through the Annie Armstrong Easter offering. I'm so excited. You know that Southern Baptist churches since 2010 have planted over 8,000 churches in America. Isn't that awesome? That's awesome. And you're a part of that. When you give, that's what you're giving to. When you pray, that's what we're praying for. And we're going to be praying for them all week, March 6th through the 13th, and we're going to be giving to them. I've done lost my place. I'm getting so excited. We're packing hope boxes to bring Jesus boxes to the impoverished children in Appalachia. We're we're packing over. We're going to try to do 130 boxes for our armed forces and people from our church that are serving in North Africa. We're doing all that. And that's, that's just in the month of March. You say that's a lot. You know what? It takes a lot. And you know what? It takes you. And it takes me. So when you hear about these opportunities, write, up, write them down. Pray about them. We need you to pray. We need you to pack. We need you to pay your tithes and your offerings so that we can preach the good news of Jesus Christ to Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. 
we're a missions-minded church. If we are not missions-minded, we should take church off the sign and just put club there. We can be Antioch Baptist Club. If we are not preaching the Lord Jesus Christ, if we are not believing that the Bible is the inspired Word of God and using it to live our lives according to God's will, if if we're not prayer-powered, if we're not missions-minded, we should change our name. But how many of you know I'm glad because I think I'm in a room with some people who are excited about Jesus. I think I'm in a room with some people who are excited about missions, who want to make a difference, who want to serve, who want to pray, and who want to give. Hallelujah. We are Antioch. Amen? Amen. Last point, point number five. Y'all can't believe it. You're like, who is preaching? Is this a guest speaker? What is going on? We're a family-focused church. We support every single age group here at Antioch Baptist Church. I don't care whether they're nine days old or 99 years old. Every single age. We have families in here. I'm looking out. I love it. We have families in here with four generations in the same house of worship, in the same church worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to tell you right now, I love that. I want to tell you right now, that's who we're called, to reach all people everywhere. I believe firmly in 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8. This is a scripture you don't hear preached on a lot. I'll put it on the screen for you. It says this. If anyone does not provide for his own, that is his own household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. You think about that. Where does the gospel have to start? Well, it has to start at home. It has to start with you. And this is just as much gospel as John 3.16. We are called to lead our families in relationship with Jesus. Make this church thing a family thing. Make this church thing something that you do together. When everyone else is going out and vacationing and spending all their time at the campground or at the ball field, we're going to spend some time there. But when our family comes together, the most important thing in our life is being a member and being active in the church. I believe this. I strongly believe this. Strong families make strong churches. I still believe that the family unit is the foundation of this society. And as the family erodes and fades, so the country is eroding and fading. We need to recapture God's design for family, that he made them male and female, and he wasn't confused, and there ain't no room for any other gender. He made them male and female in the image of God to display the glory of God. And if you don't know which one you are, go find the bathroom stall. It'll take you three seconds. And nobody's going to help you. Listen, you're going to have to do that on your own. I believe in that. I believe that marriage is still one man and one woman for life. I believe that a husband should be the head of the home and that the wife should be the heart of the home and that they should walk in partnership and in unity and follow the Lord together. I believe that husbands should love their wives the way Christ loved the church and gave himself for her and wives should submit to their husbands as the church submits to the Lord. Come on, parents. I believe that children should obey their parents and honor their father and their mother. Children are a part of the family. Children are not called to lead the family. There should be a man somewhere saying, this is my family, and as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And it's nobody else's job. Woo! Hallelujah. I also believe that the church is called to be the family of God. We're called to be the family for those that have lost their own. We're called to support and minister to the widows and to the orphans. We're called to be a place of hope and healing for broken families that are struggling and are trying to put the pieces back together. This is called to be a safe harbor for those struggling with substance abuse or emotional abuse or physical abuse. This is to be a safe place where people come and they feel the love of their heavenly father. You say, we don't have a perfect family. There is not a single perfect family in this entire book. Look at Abraham's family. His family was messed up. Look at Adam and Eve. Listen, when there were four people on the planet, one of them killed the other, one of them killed one. And there's only four people walking around, and now one of them's dead. You, listen, if your family's not perfect, guess what? You're in really good company. You know King David, a man after God's own heart? His family was a mess. I'm here to tell you God can do a, rest- a restoring work in your family today. 
If we will honor his word and strive to live by his word and come together and be real and be authentic, stop pretending and playing like we have it all together and serve the Lord and serve one another. We are a family-focused church. Now, is there, there's one family. I've got to talk about this this morning. I've been here for eight years. Pastor Dave has never done this before. I've never name-dropped from the pulpit, but I've got to do it this morning. There is one family that has plagued this church for years. This is really happening. It's recorded. It's happening. It's live. They always find a way to disrupt and gossip and complain and criticize whatever God is doing here at Antioch. And I've never called them out before, but I'm going to call them out this morning. Do you know who they are? Everybody's got, you got somebody in your mind, don't you? It's the Tater family. The Tater family. Have you ever heard of this family? It's led by Mr. Dictator. He's the self-appointed head honcho who loves to just go around bossing everybody, don't ever want to hear nobody, doesn't ever want to respond to correction, doesn't ever want to respond, but wants to go and tell everybody how they should live their life and lead their family. He is married to Miss Emmy Tater. She's an Emmy Tater. She, she's always pretending, but she ain't ever really living up to the Bible. She don't want to be like Jesus. She spent so much time trying to be like this one and that one and this one. She's an Emmy Tater. They have a daughter. Her name is Hesitator. See, Hesitator has been saying, for 20 years, I'm going to get involved in this. I'm going to get involved in that. As soon as I get my life right, I'm going to help out in the church. She's a hesitator. And then their other daughter is commentator. Commentator is always talking and yapping and gossiping and spreading it. She's never involved in anything, doesn't ever help with anything, but knows exactly why it all went wrong. They got a son named Spec. He's a spectator. All he does is stand by and watch and look and see, but he don't ever get involved himself. And their, and their youngest son is the worst one of all. He's Aggie. He's an agitator. He's always going around stirring up trouble, spreading the gossip, stirring the, stirring the stuff. You know what I mean? Listen to me. For the love of all that is holy, leave the Tater family alone. And let's be imitators of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I want the worship team to come. Listen, we are not a perfect church but we are a Christ-centered church. And I don't know where you're at in your life, I don't know where you're at in your journey of faith, but I'm here to tell you, call on the, call on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. We're a Bible-believing church. I don't know how, how often you've been reading your Bible, but I'm telling you, the only truth in this world is written in God's Word. We're a prayer-powered church. I don't know what difficulty you're struggling with. I don't know where, where your problem lies, but I know that if you will go to the Lord in prayer, He hears you when you pray. We're missions-minded. I'm here to tell you I see 200-plus missionaries sitting in this room right now. Go and be a light. And we're a family-focused church. I know we got some people dealing with family issues. When we stand and sing this song, You're Not Alone, if you need to become Christ-centered, if you, if you need prayer for any reason, if you have some family issues or personal issues, we would love to pray for you. Let's be the church. Amen? Let's be the church. So the world can see Jesus and be saved. Let's stand up on our feet. If you need to respond this morning, please come. When I walk through deep waters, I know that you will be with me. And when I'm standing
peace of Christ to which you were also called in one body rule your hearts and be thankful let the word of Christ dwell richly among you in all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another through psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing to God with gratitude in your hearts and whatever you do in word or in deed do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. As we leave here, the church is on the move. Amen? Let's be the church. Let's take Jesus everywhere we go. Don't leave Him behind. Let His Word dwell richly in you. Focus on leading your family and following Him. Let's be who we're called to be. Amen? Heavenly Father, we praise you and we thank you for this day. We thank you for your word. We thank you for this wonderful time of fellowship, praising your name and hearing your word. Help us, oh God, to be the church. Help us, oh God, to do what you've called us to do so the world can see Jesus. Lord, continue to lead those. There are many here visiting. Lord, if you would lead them, to join this church at Antioch, to be members here, to be all in and a part of these, these missions, opportunities that you have put before us. Lord, it's only by your grace that we can do anything. So we need you. 
We pray for every hope box. We pray for every meal, for every teacher. We pray for every missionary here and abroad. We pray for our soldiers stationed all over the world. We just pray, oh God, that they will feel your love and that we will be the vessel. We will be the ones that say, we're not just going to talk about it, we're going to live it. Give us the grace to do it as we go to Sunday school, as we go throughout the rest of this day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for coming. Let's be the church.